a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding Reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas, on this very special episode, guys. I got the opportunity to sit down with Dewey Taylor. Now, Dewey is one of the co-founders of something incredible called The Manifestor's Guide. Dewey personally has absolutely changed my life. Him and I have been working together for the past few months. I was this close, fingers touching on that uh, analogy there, this close to quitting manifestation altogether and saying, it's, ah, it's all bullshit, it doesn't work for me. It may work for some, but it doesn't work for me. But Dewey, after we started working together, has completely changed my life about this and my mind and everything. It has been such a launch since I've been working with him that I just can't brag on it enough. So much so, in fact, that we have partnered with them to become an affiliate because of the impact that it's made on my life. I, I can't vouch for this dude enough and how legit he is and what he has done. He also is offering just you, the listener of this show, a special scholarship offer. It's going to be the first link down there in the show notes. And also on top of that, if you type in expanding reality, all caps, all one word, uh, you get a discount of 10% on top of that, which doubles any discount that you get. So he's already made this abundantly easy for you guys. I'm vouching for this guy <laughs> like crazy uh, because of the impact that he's had on my life personally. And I just cannot recommend this enough. So while you're down there, guys, check out all of the links for Dewey, as well as the resource links that we have located down there. Food Forest Abundance, get that freedom from fear on Opus, the organization for paranormal understanding and support, as well as the Manifestor's Guide. Guys, check those resource links out. Change your life. While you're down there, check out expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is where links to all of the socials can be found. You can get merchandise there. The lives are replayed for free on the front page, as well as all the Too Hot for YouTube. The stuff that's not welcome on YouTube, well, it's welcome on our site. So go check it out, and it's absolutely free. Now, if you are interested in joining our mission and launching us into the next greater, grander version of where the show's going anyway, go ahead and sign up to become an expansive insider. That is where you're going to get bonus episodes. There's incredible panel shows that we're doing over there. It's one of the coolest things. I'm super excited about all the bonus stuff we're doing. So go sign up so that you can be a part of it and support the mission. Join us. We are on a mission to get a thousand active members. That's where we're heading. We're off to a wonderful start and it's just been the coolest ride ever. Everybody's been super supportive and it's, it's one of the most amazing communities ever. I'm just so grateful for everyone that's been a part of that. So go ahead and sign up. Link's down there in the show notes. It's titled Expansive Insider. So go over there and become an Expansive Insider. It's a wonderful way for us all to move into greater, grander versions of who we really are. And it's awesome. The conversations are just so cool. We're having so much fun. Check that out for sure. Also, just wanted to mention really quickly that this is a value for value system. So if you find the show valuable and you're listening to it for free right now, Go ahead and go over and support the mission. There's a link down in the show notes as well that says support the mission. Anything that you guys want to offer. If everybody gave just a buck, if you gave a buck an episode and you just said, you know what? Yeah, I'll throw you a dollar. Change this world, guys. So that type of value exchange is where we're heading and it's just a new world and it's a beautiful place to be and I have Dewey to thank for this new perception and directed focus. So without any further ado, guys, I know that was a lot, but there's a lot to say about this. This is an incredible episode. So without any further ado, let's get to the damn thing with Dewey Taylor. Let's just chat. I'm excited to just, you know, hey, have a man. great chat. My intention is that we, you know, we get uh, your mission, my mission, um, just anything that the listeners will take away from this and find valuable that we just get all that out and whatever that is, it will find its way to the surface. So. See, 
perfect. That's how we're going to start this thing. Dewey Taylor, dude. Awesome. It's so good to see you, brother. Uh, you have ch- absolutely changed my life, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to touch on this today. But man, uh, the Manifestor's Guide, you are the man when it comes to this stuff. Out of all the confusion and all of the misinformation out there, which is still information, uh, you seem to, um, from my own observation, and I'm a great, I've got a great bullshit meter. And from uh, my <laughs> observation, you're the real deal, and you're incredible. So like I said, uh, just Thank getting you. chills talk, thinking about the what you've done for me in the past month. So uh, let's let's do it this way, man. If you don't mind, uh, for my audience that's not too familiar with you, just tell us a little bit about you, brother. Sure. Oh, gosh. Well, that is a long and arduous story, my friend, but I will, <laughs> I'll give you the, the topical uh, bird's eye view. So I grew up in a, in a cult situation. So that was really fun. <laughs> and being, um, being somebody who, you know, it's funny, we talk a lot about with our members, <clears throat> excuse me, we talk a lot about with our members, you know, who, who are coming to us with these identity issues, you know, and sexuality and all these kind of things. And I experienced that in my life too, you know, me being gay and being in a cult <laughs> was a hysterical kind of juxtaposition, <laughs> right? Because I'm in this very super conservative cult, but I, and I'm being told that you're supposed to be experiencing this reality a certain way, but I was actually experiencing it very differently. And I think the reason why that was, was because I was kind of manifesting my own open door to be like, this isn't real. What they're telling you isn't true. Right. So um, that could have showed up in many different ways for me, but that's the way that it did show up. And so for me, um, I just kind of followed that little whisper of spirit and it led me down this really creative, cool path. And I became a filmmaker. Um, We didn't grow up with a lot of money. (laughs) So I didn't have uh, a lot of opportunities, so I didn't know at the time, but I was manifesting my own opportunities. So by the time I was 18, I had made some short films um, and a studio happened to see one of my short films while I was two weeks away from graduating high school and they immediately offered me a job. So I had the great opportunity of going to college and spending sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 to get an education to do exactly what I was already doing or just choose to do what I was already doing. Right. So, um, that's what I chose. And within a year I had saved up enough money and had enough clients. I was working for huge, huge global brands. I'm doing commercials and things like that. And, uh, I'd saved up enough money, started my own company. And I found myself in the craziest spaces. I was in executive spaces by the time I was 19 years old, you know, pitching to CEOs and executive boardrooms. And, um, I was always incredibly intimidated. I felt like a complete imposter. I had no idea what I was doing, but I allowed myself to feel that and to still be in those spaces and do it. And the the very short version of it is I started to see a lot of these principles that we teach now at TMG. I started to, to hear people say the same lingo. They were talking about these things. They were living these things. And I didn't know what, what it was. So I gave myself permission whenever I was around somebody massively successful. I was like, just ask one question. You know, just ask one question, even if you're intimidated, even if you're nervous. And so I'd pull these CEOs aside. Do you mind if I ask you a question? You know, and I'm just this young kid. And what I found was a lot of the programming that I had had around success, right? What I, what I thought was success, money and, you know, power positions and all this kind of stuff really started to disintegrate pretty quickly because I, I always had this kind of Mr. Burns thing in my head, you know, like, they're all trying to rule the world, you know, kind of thing. So, and I started to see very quickly that that wasn't what I was experiencing. These people were incredibly compassionate. They had mission, they had purpose, they were adding value to the world. They knew exactly what their mission was every single time that I would talk to somebody. And they were creating new avenues of stuff to come into this physical existence that hadn't been here before. And a lot of these principles that we teach, a lot of these universal laws and success success principles and stuff started making themselves known to me, but they were, I'd say it was about a 16 year journey for me to really start putting them into separate spaces and go, what is this? Because a lot of people would talk about science and physiology and you have to understand your body and how your brain works. And, you know, I was like, okay. And then I started putting stuff in that bucket. And then success principles, I would put those over here in this bucket. And then universal laws, I'd put that over here in this bucket. And that's pretty much the three things that I saw that all these people who had everything they wanted in life, it's not just money, but it was freedom. 
right? It was time. It was balance in their lives, spending time with their kids, watching their kids grow up, you know, just seeing they, they really just kind of had it all and it seemed to come so easy for them. So that's why TMG even exists. So we, we connect the dots between universal law, success principles, and leading edge science. So people understand their bodies, people understand the forces of the universe and how to manifest beyond just law of attraction. I think people think that law of attraction equals manifestation. And that is a huge misconception that keeps people from actually manifesting what they desire. So you, you nailed it with how this. How did I do? Uh, did, how did you, I do? Was that you, pretty good? <laughs> incredible, of course, because you're just super eloquent. And of course, your audio sounds wonderful. So you spoil me with that as well. Uh, and yes, and so it, it's amazing to, to me to hear your story going from where you were, the challenges that you had, the programming that you were grown up with that's the opposite of your your actual understanding of reality, which again, you know, this is one of the most interesting things to me is that we go through our lives being told a certain thing. And then when that doesn't jive with our observation of it, I think that that's like the first like gateway into you really opening up to yourself and saying, Hey, you know, maybe things aren't this way, but it takes that little bit of questioning. I also really like what you said about successful people, you know, because there is this, you know, almost engineered programming as well. Same, same category here yeah. of that successful people are evil, that money's evil, that you should not want it at all. And that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can't, you know, it's not for you and you should just be small. And so there is this level of society. And I think that that's really the class divide. It's those yes. who are given the tools and opportunities, or at least can see the world around them in a little bit different way to question it enough to move out of it. And then those that don't, and those that get stuck in the paradigm, that's the true class system. System, is those just willing 100%. to free themselves. And so I love the approach, though, that you took with this rather than just going, oh, the Mr. Burns or the, you know, uh, Scrooge McDuck kind of a thing. You, you <laughs> saw it as an opportunity to learn and grow. And this is one of the most important things with people who are, you know, striving to be millionaires, anything like that. Uh, they hang out with millionaires, you know, I mean, it's like right. talk to those people. This is, you know, you got to get amongst them. And so you getting amongst them is the reason that, you know, you were able to move forward, that you're so damn successful in what you're doing now. We won't even talk about all the really Really cool things that you got going on. Uh, but really, this is how the Manifestor's Guide was born, was you observing these buckets, as you call them, and that's part of your teaching as well, and then categorizing these things to where you're like, okay, well, here are some simplified focuses. Because this is another thing that people don't really talk about, is that success has many different forms, but really one of the best ones is this direction of focus. And that's something you helped me tremendously yes. with. That focus is really the difference between you and anyone else who just wants things, but just in the sea of potentiality, they can't choose one. And so they just keep getting bombarded by the most random things because they're manifesting in that way. It's well, like, how can you manifest something if you don't know what it is? Th this is the thing, right? It's, it's, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the, it's the quote from uh, the Cheshire Cat in uh, Alice in Wonderland. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And yes. that that is the biggest difference, I think, in what I've learned from you is to be able to direct focus focus, to have a mission and to have a point of launch. You know, you need a direction to go to and setting goals along the way. It's it's much simpler than people think, but it's not easy yes. based on the programming. And so to tell us that. I mean, why is it simple but not easy? Well, I wrote a book called The Manifestor's Guide to Ease to kind of introduce um, a little bit of that into the experience. And it's a very, very um, easy read uh, intentionally. It literally is a guide. Um, but really it comes down to this by the time you're seven years old, you've installed a program in your mind that you will run for the rest of your life. Our brains work very much like a computer, but instead are, of, of working just like a computer, they're actually more efficient than a computer. Instead of having software and hardware, we have what scientists call wetware, right? <laughs> so it's all one thing back to universal laws. Law of divine oneness is universal law number one. Everything's connected to everything else. That is us. We are one big energy battery. So if we are not intentional of how we're segmenting our energy in all these different spaces, we think all the energy is different. So we think the energy that we're exuding physically is different than the energy that we're using mentally, right? Or using spiritually. <laughs> and it's not at all. It's all the same thing. So really, um, Realizing that the program that we are running, I, I call it, you know, it's a lack program versus what I call power programming. What you were talking about before, that success programming is what I call power program. And I saw all these people running this same power program. And I'm like, wait, how did you get that one? And I got this one, <laughs> you know, that that's not cool. Like, so 
really what I started seeing, and I have done so much research over this last 16, almost 17 years now. Um, and like you said before, just being around people who were what you desire to be environment and ecosystem is a huge part, which is why we've set up Manifestor's Guide to be what it is. It is also a community. So it is such a huge part of what we do. We practice media blackout during the week, which we can get into later why we do that. But it allows a lot of space for focus, law of compensation. And so as people are focusing during the week, the only real engagement that they have with technology is through the inner circle online community. That's all that they really do. So, so that's encouragement, high level focus, um, reinforcing pr the principles back and forth to each other, practicing, you know, um, kind of, sh you know, shooting the shit with people and asking them like, how do I do this? You know? Um, and it's, it's a very calm focused existence being in an environment that will actually foster the person that you're becoming. And that, you know, I think of it like this, think of all your goals and all the things that you desire to happen in your life to be like your version of going to Mars, right? If you go to that place, and you haven't set up the ecosystem yet, when you take off your helmet, what is that gonna look like, right? The person that we are right now in this version of our reality doesn't exist in that reality. So we are the ones who have to change and expand to be able to fit into that reality. We can't other ourselves from the reality. Um, so it's really just vibrationally matching that reality and then being able to go to that space and then take off the helmet and then we're good to go. You know, but that a lot of that comes with reprogramming. You have to reprogram the subconscious mind that controls 95% of everything that you do say and experience in this reality. And that's something too, that has been a huge part of my journey, being really frustrated that I was seeing these people manifesting very easily, right? I mean, listen, I'm consulting some guy who's making $50 million a year and I'm struggling to pay my rent back when I, you know, back in the day, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, well, he's listening to me but I'm still struggling. Why is this possible? Right. And that's because he was just running a different program than I was. And once I finally realized that, and it's funny that you said earlier gateway, you know, it's the gateway. That's what we call kind of our first phase of deprogramming is gateway. Cause you have to actually go through that gateway. You have to pull the plug. We've talked about this, right? Oh yeah. So we do that through a, a very proprietary version of um, hypnosis. So it's, it's kind of a, it's not even really a hybrid. It's kind of a tribrid version of hypnosis and different therapies. But we go in very deep to the subconscious mind and we pull all those plugs out. We make everything make sense. And then when you come out of it, you're like, I understand why this has been this way. I understand all these things that didn't make any sense. So it's kind of like that illusion of looking through the glass and everything that you desire in your life is on the other side of that glass. And you're just like, I can see it. It's right there. I feel like I can reach out and touch it. But what is this invisible force field? that's keeping me from this. That's so frustrating. I would say 99% of everybody that comes to us, that's what their experience is. They're like, I have all the skills and the talents and the thing. I, I know this is my mission. I just want it. I can see it. Why can't I step through that? What is that force field? So that's really what we do. And I'll be honest, man, your technique, the graphics that you've uh, integrated and utilized, just the perception that you have, the tools at your disposal, especially with like Nicole, um, with your hypnosis, with the different understandings that you've got about what it does take to reprogram someone and to literally launch you into that next mode, because that's the dissolving of the glass. That's you. Yes. Now you're like transmuting through that thing. What you realize is that you're actually like way more powerful and way more focused. And then all of a sudden you're in, you're on the other side of the glass. So you turn around you're like, hang on, how did the hell did I get here? And it's yeah. just through this directed of focus. So I definitely want to touch on the media blackout uh, here in a second. But one of the things I really found interesting about what you bring to this especially is, uh, number one, your analogies are king. You are king of metaphors. And the way that you describe things, uh, I remember when we first spoke uh, about the law of compensation. So you had a wonderful metaphor for that. Do you mind telling us about that, about the couch? Sure. I mean, really, there's a bunch of different ways of looking at compensation. And also just to kind of preface this with everyone, you know, universal law, a law of attraction is a universal law. There are hundreds of universal laws. So the ones that we use primarily are the hermetic laws, right? So there's 12 of those. However, we have incorporated 
hundreds of other laws in there. So we do universal law. And then we have underneath those laws, um, something that's never existed before, but we call them universal principles. And they're really the rest of the laws, but a lot of these laws fit underneath other laws, right? For instance, the law of open cycles, that really is compensation. It's just a different form of compensation. It's explaining uh, like a micro version of compensation in one particular area. So we have organized it in a way that makes a lot more sense, right? So you don't have hundreds and hundreds of things to learn you really have 12 things to learn and then there's a bunch of different ways of practicing them so it makes it a lot easier right you're talking about ease um but my metaphor really for compensation compensation in its simplest form is about creating space so if you're going to create you know if you let's just say like a beautiful new living room and you buy all this new furniture <laughs> and your furniture comes but you don't clear out the old stuff just, I mean, I think everybody knows immediately in their brain what that looks like. You got the dingy old couch, then you got the new couch, you got the dingy old armchair, and then the new armchair doesn't look so pretty. It starts to look a little cluttered. And over our lifetime, the more that we try to bring in new stuff, we just keep cluttering and cluttering. And then all of a sudden we're on an episode of hoarders yeah. and we're that lady in the corner with no teeth going, ah, you know, <laughs> it's like, so to me, that's it's compensation is so incredibly important when we are creating space for the new before we allow the new to come in, so it's not too crowded, got to get rid of the old stuff. We got to get rid of the old people. We got to get rid of the old environments. We got to get rid of the old ways of thinking. Then the new stuff is right there, ready to come in. The movers come in, they put it down. It's beautiful. It's shiny. It's pretty. And everyone goes, wow, it's a reveal on a makeover show. And everybody wants that, right? That's the experience. So to me, that is the thing that I hear the most, I will say. I mean, we hear a lot of regular stuff, but that's the, the thing I hear the most from our brand new members every single time. I don't have time. I just don't have time for that. Oh, I'm just trying to do this, but you know, this is going on and that's going on. And then these people and they, you know, uh, my family's saying these things and my best friend says I don't have time for them anymore. And you know, how can I fit all this new stuff I'm trying to do in my life? Well, we've got to practice compensation. <laughs> you know, we got to practice the curation part of manifesting. And that's the, the stuff that a lot of people don't want to do, or they're not ready to do because that causes drastic radical change in your life. When you do that, it, it definitely does. And this is one of these things. And especially when you, when you start looking into like spiritual concepts and, and all of these kinds of things, and, and you can go down the rabbit holes in one direction. But what I love about you, man, is that you, you step back and you really put all of this stuff in, into a picture that's not only viewable, like you could see all of it, you don't have to turn your head. It's like, here it is. Okay. And then you just go through these steps and then here you go. And it's such a, uh, like I said, a directive focus that, man, it's so appealing because it takes this sea of nonsense and all the noise. And it just says, Hey dude, if you just focus on these couple of things here, you will really see some massive changes. Now, those changes come in the form of kind of what I've been experiencing over the past few weeks, which is just, <laughs> uh, I mean, how would you put that? I mean, it's, it falls apart. Constriction. Right? Constriction. Okay. Well, so we'll say there's, there's really in the, in the expansion process that we've talked about law of rhythm, right? Cause you come from music and it's so important to know the universal law so you can identify what's going on. So then our experience doesn't feel like chaos. Once you know what's going on, you're like, oh, this is just a part of the whole thing. Okay, cool. And then you can sit back and feel a little bit more comfortable with it, right? You're still in discomfort. You're still in the discomfort zone. That's a great place to be, but you can start becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. So what we're talking about is the expansion process. When something expands, it always constricts and then expands. Think about like um, a balloon, right? You're going to stretch a balloon to the point where it's kind of max. Then you can kind of let it you can kind of let it uninflate for a second and then we can stretch it a bit more, right? But every, with every stretch, you're gonna you know, feel a little bit of, of discomfort, right? We are stretching the skin of the balloon, but eventually that's gonna let us inflate it to a place where we wouldn't have before, it would just have popped. So if we try to do too much at once, right? Too fast and we're not actually ready to expand, we're just gonna blow the balloon up and then we have to start all over again, right? So part of the whole expansion process, naturally, if we just allow the law of rhythm to work, the way that it does. We have ebbs and flows. They have the ups, the downs, the, that whole rhythm naturally works in our favor. So we experience some expansion and then oh, let's stop. Okay. Then we experience some expansion. Then, okay, wait, 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 you know, and we're, we're stretching ourselves. We're getting to a space where we can 
understand more, we can take more in. So part of that, when I say constriction, it feels constrictive to us, right? Because we want so much to come in so fast. So we feel like the more our desires are growing, the less space we have for the desire. When really what's happening is we're, we're stretching to make more room for the desire to fit. You know, that's really what's happening. So we have to expand, talk about expanding reality, right? Come on. That's, that's what it's all about. We have to literally expand our reality. We have to expand our minds. We have to expand our perception of what's going on and expand our understanding of all the universal forces that are going on around us and how to use those. And this is something that you've really helped me with this perspective. And so it feels like whenever, you know, we go through these changes, it's almost like uh, a, a, you're led through a series of doors, right? Or you're presented with a series of doors. Now, in the meantime of that door being opened, which is based on what you do in the new room that you've just walked in, that you fill that space with all kinds of things, right? Your ideas, your, what's on the other side of that door? Where do I want to move forward? Or I'm good here. Uh, but then whenever that door opens and it's time for you to move through it, you've got to fit through that door, shedding all of the things that you filled your existence with in that void, in that cavity before your pinch point. And this is one of the things, because I was telling you the other day when we were talking, I was like, oh my God, dude, it's all, it's all fucked. Everything's falling apart. My life sucks. And he's like, great. And you're just smiling as I'm just like pouring my heart out I know, out people think you. I'm crazy when <laughs> no. that, but I, I get so excited when I hear people go, it's all falling apart. I go, no, it's falling together. This is so wonderful. <laughs> but that right there, and I immediately went out and told my wife this, because that, that amazing woman, man, she's really, she's really just been here through all this stuff and so and she you know is so excited every time I speak to you because she's just like what's up and I come out with this smile and it's just this relief she hasn't seen on my face in a while and so to even come out and just say okay here's where we are it, whenever I'm just like pouring my heart out to you and you're smiling your ass off it it I didn't take it <laughs> I didn't take it any other way than thank God you know I mean thank God right. like this is the reaction because you've really like I said helped me tune my focus so I trust your perception of my process which has been just wonderful you you just really helped me mitigate the angstiness in this process and you've you, tr you literally transmuted that anxiety into excitement and for this because it's super overwhelming it felt like that at first it, but what the overwhelming was it's like like, hey, if you just take all the crap that you kind of let, all the barnacles that you've let build up on you, we're going to scrape those off so you feel lighter, you feel more, you know, aerodynamic, really. And you you have just this passion to move in that direction. And that's, again, what you've done for me. So all the ways, of course, guys, I'll mention this at this point, uh, to find Dewey and the Manifestor's Guide are going to be located down in the show notes. Definitely check that out. Uh, your website's fantastic. I, I just love your programming. Now, uh, something I wanted to mention personally also is synchronicity between us. Uh, you have a book up on your website uh, for the reading uh, club that you guys do, and it's called The Water Tree Way by Ruth Mendelson. Oh, Ruth. Yeah, yeah. I've had her on the show. No way. Oh, I love Ruth. Yeah, she was on our podcast, uh, Manifestor's Guide Today, and I just, I think she's so great. That uh, That's hilarious. That doesn't surprise me, though, right? Doesn't surprise me at all. It makes complete sense, and she's one of the coolest damn people, and so we nerded out, but then I saw her Water Tree Way <laughs> on your website, and I was like, son of a bitch. You know, it all it all makes sense. Yeah, it was one of our, our book club selections. Um, she She's fantastic. Yeah, I love Ruth. Oh, and I could fill your book club selection forever, uh, but you just hey, let me know if you need after. another book. Yeah, let's do all it. Right. Yeah. And and so, um, like I said, the working with you, man, has just it. You've absolutely changed my life. And so this isn't a commercial for for what you do. But I will say this. We, again, don't sell things on the show, but I cannot tell you what you have done for me. And listening audience, uh, if you really, really think that you are just absolutely screwed, you're overwhelmed with the whole thing, you're over the whole manifestation thing because I was call Dewey up talk to him because he would change <laughs> your damn life. And again, this is this is a plug on my behalf. This is my call to tell everyone well, how amazing you that. are. Well, it's just well, let, let me explain just to, to people. We say this all the time. You know, this all sounds so fun and this sounds so good and people get excited. Uh, a lot of people we talk with, I, I we go through a, a very um, intimate curation process before we accept the member. We don't just let anybody come in and because it's an investment. We believe in investment. We believe in value exchange. And I'm not just talking money. People think money is the only thing that this, you know, oh, they're selling a service and they're, I, that is not what we're doing. Yeah. We are on a mission to create 1 million master manifestors. Not everybody's ready for that. So if somebody has, you know, manifested, if they're in their car, I say this all the time to people, if you're the person who's in your car going, I'm ready, I'm so ready, please universe, give me that open door, you know, or please God, I'm, I'm so ready to get to the other side of that glass wall. I just don't know how to do it, that kind of thing. And then we show up, then you hear something like this, or that that's when you're really ready for what we do. 
if you're just somebody who kind of toys around with this or likes to, you know, to talk about it a lot and you kind of like just to live in that, I like to vibe good and feel good kind of thing. This probably isn't for you because this is rapid life transformation. Yes. It is jarring. It shakes things up. But six months from now, you're in a completely different place. Let me give you one example. This <laughs> we have many examples, but this is one that I just love so much. So we had a member come in who, uh, I love so much. She's incredible, just an incredibly artsy, interesting human being, right? She comes in, she's in her mid thirties, um, an actor, just in tears, you know, very first coaching, going through this stuff. It's very overwhelming for her. And she's like, I just need to be in a different space. I love my husband. We're married. We have a great life, but I'm looking at my life right now, the way that it is. I'm a teacher and he has a regular nine to five. This is nothing like I wanted my life to look like. And I was like, well, what, what did you want it to be? She said, I wanted to be on Saturday night live. I wanted to live in New York. I wanted to do all these things. And I wanted to eventually the bigger purpose of what, you know, that's another thing we do. We curate your top six life goals, right? Right. Your big goals that you're doing. So we can actually calculate the trajectory toward what that looks like. And it becomes very easy to say yes and no to the things in your life. Right. And create that, that space through compensation. And her big mission really was to open doors for people who hadn't had doors opened yet, you know, but, you know, people who are in minority communities and things. She's like, I work with these kids. I want to be somebody who writes those parts and who produces those shows. And I'm like, see that you're, you're not complaining. You're being the change. That's awesome. So what are we doing? You know, why, why aren't we there? <laughs> really? There was this, all these excuses, all these blocks in the, in the way. So before we even got into the subconscious reprogramming, she didn't even do subconscious reprogramming before this moved. What we did is we, I, I immediately assessed people, and, which I did with you. She was very similar to you, right? The universal laws that she most gravitated toward naturally actually wasn't law of attraction, right? It wasn't compensation. It wasn't any of these things. She gravitated toward inspired action, cause and effect, very similar to you. So she's like, I believe right now in my current program, if I make the right choices and I'm inspired and I'm doing things that I love, that will cause something to happen and a positive effect will come out of that in my life. And I will see it physically in my space. So I said, great, let's use that. So we immediately identified what is an open door to get to Saturday Night Live. She said, first thing that came out of her mouth. Well, I know they pick people from the groundlings. It's a comedy troupe, right? said, have you ever auditioned for the groundlings? No. I said, go to the website right now. So she went and while she's typing in, well, the thing is, I'm like, excuse, 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 right? Well, my husband and I, we can't move right now because of his job in the boat. And I said, Beach, just go. So she goes to the website. She looks up the auditions. Well, guess what? We're in a pandemic. Universe just made this really easy. They're doing <laughs> everything online, right? So she was like, oh, um, like, I mean, I guess I could audition. I'm like, great. She's like, well, let me talk to some people and then I'll prepare. I said, no, sign up for the audition right now. So I'm challenging her to be like, step out of that comfort zone, right? So she signs up for the audition. She has an audition a week later. It's the last one of the entire quarter. She was the last person to audition. Not only does she get in, she skips two levels because they thought she was so good. So she does her stuff online. And in just a couple of months, she comes back. One of her big manifestations was... Um, in the community, she announced to everybody, hey, guys, uh, it was just revealed to me that there is a special fast track for people that they offer the scholarship to here where they train you one on one on your, uh, how to ha have an SNL audition. Right. And she goes, so they offered that to me and it's one on one training. And at the end of it, because Lauren has relationships, Lauren Michaels, the guy who runs SNL with, the, with these places, this is where he picks people from, right? Just a couple of places, like they do the Groundlings and Second City, Upright Citizens Brigade. So he, uh, <laughs> she, she basically announced everybody, I'm doing this fast track thing. And at the end of it, I get an SNL audition. And she was like, I, this is literally like, I think three or four months after she comes in. So she came in and within 45 minutes, she had an audition for this place. And then four months later, she's like, here's my SNL audition. It's right here. And then the funniest part is as she's prepping for this, right? It just so happens to be that this is the season where they just let four main cast members go. So they have four spots to fill. That's like unprecedented, yeah. right? Yeah. So I tell people this all the time because it's like, now I don't know if she's going to get on this season or not. It doesn't matter. But the whole point is she's like, I could have never seen this path open up this quickly 
And the whole point is we overcomplicate all of this with our program and with this and all oh, this detail and that, and then I have to move to Beverly Hills and we can't do that because of this. And but shh, stop, stop, <laughs> you know? So I love examples like that because you work with different universal laws, depending where somebody is, we call it the entry point method. Where is your entry point into begin manifesting? And then how do we learn the other laws to start opening all the other doors? You can start at many different spaces. So, yeah. I mean, and, and your read on her and needing to facilitate her, that the language that she was most attuned to was this inspired action. That's what you facilitated. Now, this is another thing that I, as you're telling this, that I completely relate to with my experience with you. You really empower people to take the next steps that they're too scared to take. And that on the other side of that barrier, like you really, you know, again, when we look at like spirituality, we look at all that stuff. You can check off things like crazy because they're easy to do. It's the hard stuff, man. That's the most necessary, by the way. That's what you provide. But your insight into the different types of person how universal law works, how the mind works, all of the factors that you've been studying for your entire life. That's what that's what plays into why it's so goddamn effective and beneficial, man. You really know how to direct the focus of the individual based on, again, all these principles that you talk about. And so whenever you say, nope, sign up for it right now, you've told me things like this that I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And you're just like, yep, this is the next step. So you just let me know when you're ready. And then that's the next thing. But that's right. your next thing. That, that to me was the most empowering thing ever because you really are encouraging people to take that next step. And this is, this is again, one of the most valuable things about you, dude, not only all of the insight, but your ability to see inside people, what they're, what the, what we can see ourselves, but we're not willing to have the conversation about you're like, Hey, but what about this? And you lift it out. It's so you're almost like super, uh, like a medium in this point. You're very intuitive when it comes to folks on like, almost like a woo woo level, which is brilliant. <laughs> well, we call it goal or gap. So what you're talking about, that's I actually train other coaches to do that. That. That's literally what we do. So we have a proprietary process in our weekly coachings. We do that every week. Some people come in and they go, we're we really going to do this every week. Absolutely. And the whole idea is we, we do the same top six goals. So we have three pillars of a happy life, love and health, wealth and prosperity, balance and happiness. We grow every pillar. So if you're just focused on money, well, guess what? We're also going to grow your health as well. You don't have an option because if you grow one pillar unevenly, what happens is you start manifesting through force. I always use Donald Trump as an example. Donald Trump is a manifester, but he hasn't mastered manifestation because he gets what he wants, but he does it through force and abrasion. So can you get what you want in one area? Absolutely. But we, we see what that looks like to other people, right? And, and what other people's experiences. So that's not what we're about. You know, we're always manifesting. We are about manifestation from a space of conscious creation in a purpose-driven way that expands the world with zero abrasion. That's what we're about. So you grow all pillars at once in order to make that happen. Yeah. And th this is one of the most important things that you brought to my attention because I was so driven and focused on one particular pillar and yeah. everything was falling apart. So that pillar, I felt like was going okay, not great, but really one of the greatest insights that you offered me was balance, man. And so now I'm really mindful about, you know, not, not even scheduling, just saying, okay, well, I'm, you know, my wife and I are going to do this and we've got a trip planned, you know, we haven't gone on vacation in seven years. So now you've really inspired me to say, no, 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 let's get that on the books and let's get that because it's part of the balance. Same with the health. You, you've got to take care of yourself. And I love, again, your approach with this. Your focus is so encompassing, but it's all so damn necessary. But you and, know why? And this is where I'm going to interject and interrupt yeah. just because this is so important to what you're saying. Because I asked you the question, we, we went through a little bit of that proprietary process, right? We went a little bit through that goal or gap to be like, but what, why? To go underneath the surface, ask the deeper questions. Why are we manifesting this thing? Really what you were manifesting and what happens, I would say 100%, not 99, 100% of the time with people, they think they want to manifest one thing, but actually they really want something else that they think that manifestation will bring them. What you are truly manifesting was freedom. Yeah. It wasn't what you thought you were manifesting. And you're like, yeah, that's what I want. I want that because I think it's going to give me freedom. Well, guess what? You have freedom over here too. So let's start investing in all the areas where we can provide freedom, including taking a break from the stuff that's stressing us out, investing more time in our, our family and having an adventure. And that's freedom, right? So that's what we're saying. Everything is connected. And once you realize we're growing all pillars because we're growing ourselves, we're expanding our full self. That's where law of attraction comes in. You have to actually expand yourself to a place where you can become magnetic. You have to 
grow your mass where you can, I mean, be gravitationally attractive too. Because there's, we teach a dual approach to law of attraction. One of them is, is um, gravitational attraction, which means you have to grow your mass, right? Because gravity is um, mass warping space time. So you got to grow. And then you start pulling everything into your orbit, every opportunity, every eyeball, every ear. And then the curation process happens through magnetic attraction. So we got to turn up the magnet. We also have to grow ourselves to be that powerful. So a lot of times I tell people, stop focusing on attraction so much yet. Start growing yourself, growing that value, growing your passions, grow your inspiration. Let's use some of the other laws first. Then once we get big enough where people are looking at us and paying attention, then we can go, okay, now let's start curating with attraction because you are already naturally attracting. So we're not starting from scratch, trying to attract because that seems overwhelming for people. How do I get things to just come to me out of nowhere? Well, let's not start there. <laughs> you know, Let's get there as a, as a phase two. You know, and what I love most about your approach and the analogy that kind of just comes to mind is that there is this uh, level you know, of frequency. So I'm going to use this in uh, terms of altitude, but really it's just about frequency. And we know there's no hierarchical, right? Uh, so with what you've done, though, is you really kind of point out to folks um, how I interpreted it was this like Tower of Babel idea to where like, okay, look, all the stuff you want's up there, but you're down here. So why don't you build your foundation and get it nice and strong so that all you got to do is reach up and grab. And then what's more is at a certain point, your tower gets so tall and you're so foundationally strong and driven and focused that this spire that you've built just attracts shit constantly and you can't help but get bumped into by the frequencies that you're you're looking to engage with but you got to yeah. grow into it man so i'm gonna i love that it's a great place to so everybody keep that in your mind i don't know how to do this verbally because i usually do this visually so we don't usually talk about this but what you brought up is such an open door that i have to talk about it so we practice something that I, this is something that just came intuitively to me because I never could explain this in my understanding of law of polarity. It's one of the most important universal laws that complete, people completely ignore. So think of a battery, right? You have the positive and the negative. So the energy flows because we have a positive and a negative, right? The cells in our body are held together from this charge. We would literally scientifically be a pile of, of soup of jelly if we didn't have polarity. We wouldn't even be able to be a conscious being in this space. So polarity is incredibly important. But what polarity shows us is if there's light, there will be darkness. If there's joy, there will be pain, right? If there's freedom, there will be constriction. <laughs> you know, it, that's what it shows us. So when you can just accept that everything is everything at all times, period, and I have a choice where to direct my focus and I can use tools, right? And continue growing in my understanding to be able to curate my adventure. This is kind of a choose your own adventure situation. Absolutely. So picture a Rubik's cube. Okay. So like a big 3d grid Rubik's cube. There you go. You got a Rubik's cube right there. <laughs> Alignment, right? <laughs> Alignment. So, okay. At each point at each intersection on the Rubik's cube, right? Is a, is a life cycle. So we have a little dot, right? Connecting all these little 3D spaces, all these little cubes. There's tons of little tiny cubes within the bigger cube, right? The big cube is our full existence. This goes on up, down, side to side, backwards, forwards into infinity. There is infinite options. Our desire sits somewhere on this intersection of this Rubik's cube, okay? So... What you were talking about, what we, how we create the beacon, right? And where, where we go to is very accurate, except it's not just like a straight shot up and it's not the same trajectory for every person. Cause this is what happens a lot, especially when we get couples or people who are having relationship troubles that come in, yeah. cause this is what we end up getting to. And I never encourage people to, you know, split up or, but it's to let everybody just be aware of what's going on. Cause I would say 99% of the time what's happening is what somebody wants is 18 clicks forward, 10 clicks up and three clicks to the right. That's where you're trying to go. This person is 25 clicks down, 18 clicks back, you know, and two to the left. You're literally going to completely different directions. So this is where polarity comes in. Your positive is someone else's negative. And your negative is their positive. So you're literally running toward two different things because that's what feels good to you. And then you're arguing about why the other person isn't supporting you and going the other way. Well, because we are tethered emotionally to each other, right? And physically, in many ways, our bank accounts are tied up and this, right? So when I'm pulling you toward what I want, I'm pulling you away from where you're going. 
So that's the other part of this, of this whole growth journey and process is trajectory, being crystal clear on where you're going, what that looks like. And if there is alignment in the environment, the people that you're around, right? Because if I'm going to go where I'm going to go, I can't be tethered. We have to respect other people. We have to communicate and we have to make sure that we're headed in the same direction in a loving way without pulling people away from their destiny. Dude, a hundred percent. And what's so wonderful about what you just said is because this is something I've thought a lot about with my wife and I, you know, we are absolutely, thank God we're in such alignment and mm -hmm. we're on the same trajectory. I mean, we really have the same desires and focuses. And so we really help each other with this. And so yeah. we, and, and I loved your analogy as well, that you're tethered to something that's going the opposite direction of you from where you want to go. So really you both just kind of end up in the middle in this stuck place where neither one of you prefer. And so if you can at least, you know, tell people, Hey, or your wife or your spouse or whatever, Hey, we're either in alignment with this or we're not. And that's okay. Like if you want to yes. achieve your dreams, we can absolutely do that, but we need to do it together. And I mean, man, you, you talk about this with raising kids. You talk about this with anything yes. like this. And then you're, yes. you know, uh, you've got polarized energies with, you know, this dualistic world that we live in, you know, you're in a male, female relationship. Well, then you've got different challenges. You've got different things. You're in uh, male, male, female, female. You're still going to have some elements of a masculine and a feminine type of energy is being played out there. Now, rather you balance both of those or whatever. I mean, you know, my wife and I switch roles all the time with that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. sometimes she'll be like super, you know, yep, let's do it. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. And then other times it's, it's the <laughs> other way, but we're together at least. And this is something I'm so grateful for because it's not that we're fighting each other. You know, it's not like these poor couples, you know, that like one's a Democrat, one's a Republican, like who cares about that kind of stuff anyway, but it makes a massive impact on your home and it makes a huge difference on whether you're Christian or atheist. I mean, these are, I get opposites attract, but man, alignment soars. And that's something that's very interesting. It's like, you guys can maybe be happy and the sex is probably great, but man, if you want to really jump to that next level, alignment is key and you've both got to be in on this. So but it's, that has to do with where you're going. Yes. Right. And that's the thing is you can be too complete. We are, we are different. Yeah, right. We're beautiful. different parts of the same body, right? We're all source energy, right? But we're different parts of that body. So it's respecting the left hand from the right. But the whole idea is if, I mean, think about those uh, medieval torture chambers, right? Look, if you're pulling in two different directions, you're going to split the whole thing in two. It's not going to be a, a, a pleasant experience, but a very painful experience, right? So if you're going to attach yourself to something, and I tell people this all the time, doesn't matter whether we're talking about being couples. I mean, I could come back and do a whole episode with you on just law of gender. That is a huge ignored universal law. My gosh, that fixes so many things in life. Once people understand what that looks like, what it means, and they go, oh, that's why my wife's so annoying. Yeah. Oh, that's why I, I ignore what she's saying and I don't listen. You know, it's it just fixes literally every relationship problem. But the it, it's it's such a fascinating thing when you can attach yourself to principle and mission. Yeah. We attach ourselves to people, right? We hear this a lot, like with reality TV, think of the drama cycles. That's another thing we practice is Cartman's drama tri triangle, right? So what does the drama cycle look like? What are the participants? What roles are we playing? We practice that and people look at it and go, oh my gosh, no wonder my life has been so dramatic my entire life, right? Because you're playing a role in this cycle that's been scientifically studied and you just keep playing a role in this over and over and over and over. So if you attach yourself not to people, but to a mission, to your purpose, it's so easy to actually connect with someone on a higher frequency. So you can be two completely different people. You can love different music. You can have different desires, different friends, different, you can be completely different, but you're going to the same destination. So when you say, you know, I love this person, I'm so excited to go on this journey. Well, what's the journey? It's not a journey of arguing and fighting, trying to get somebody to, to you know, think the way you think. You can be a Republican and a Democrat in the same marriage if you share the same overall mission and you're going to the same destination. Fantastic. Let's hold hands, have a little bit of a different ideology, but let's go to the same place. That's when the journey is so much fun. That is what alignment is. It's where you're going. But that also has to do with what does the destination look like? What is the trajectory? Because you have to calculate trajectory, right? Think about like, um, we use this example all the time too, because people kind of, they get what I'm saying and they get generally universal law, like, yeah, 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 it's a universal force. But what does that actually mean? So think about it this way. Your desires are on the moon. And how do I get there, right? Seems so far away. Well, we know that we can do that. We just have to source the materials that are already here. All the things that we desire and need are already available to us. So we just source the materials, we build the rocket ship. We have to learn how to pilot the machine 
right? So that's something different. Then we have to actually calculate the trajectory. So how do we do that? We have to understand all the universal forces to actually calculate where we're going to go. And then you can, with surprising accuracy, land exactly where you want to millions of miles away. And another, another example too, for people, if you only believe in like gravity, right? We all believe in gravity because it's something we just accept as a universal force. It's the same thing as law of attraction and all these other universal laws. So let's just use that. If you only believe in gravity, you're standing on top of the Hoover Dam, you got a bowling ball. There's a big target at the bottom. And I say, drop this ball over the target, hit the middle, and you get everything you want in life. People go, oh, this is easy, right? Because I know how gravity works. <laughs> so they drop the bowling ball. And what happens, right? It goes way off to the yeah. side and it lands somewhere else. And they're like, well, that, that's, that's impossible. How did it not hit the target? I can see the target. I know gravity works. I, the ball fell down. Why did it go over that? No, let me try it again. So they do it again. And then we do it again and again and again. This is what we do in our lives, right? We keep doing the same thing over and over. And the ball keeps going over there. And we're like, this doesn't work. Screw this, right? Now we know gravity is real because we can see the ball going down, but it keeps going over there. It's because there are other forces at work that we're not taking into account. If we just learn what those other forces are, we can calculate the trajectory. We can see the target. We can let the ball drop. Gravity is one part of the force in the calculation, but we'll hit that target every time. Same thing with manifestation. We have to learn all of the laws. We have to learn how all the forces of the universe work, see what our entry point is, where we can start manifesting, but also as we're calculating something that seems further and further away to us, right? How do we do that? How do we plan that trajectory and how do we hit that target every time? It's absolutely possible, but we have to expand our understanding. Man, I'm biting my tongue on the NASA stuff, but that's I'm giving myself a gold star for not going into the moon moon stuff. But I, <laughs> I love, love your analogy because it's absolutely apt. Now, one of the things I definitely wanted to make sure that we got covered here was uh, when my, uh, so I personally have found a pattern, a rhythm uh, within my life that about once once a month, I get on my, my little man sees here and I get about once a month, I get into this uh, frame <laughs> of mind um, and it's just like a cycle. And so there's this thing and I've referred to as just this shame cycle, just something like that. And man, no matter how many times I've heard Dewey Taylor talk about it, or no matter how many wonderful affirmations I do or anything like that, it seems that the cycle pops back up to keep, it's it's done a great job in the past, it's it's no longer there because I'm super aware of it. And I'll, I'll give you a metaphor for how I figured that out. Uh, in, in the past to where it just, yep, okay, once a month, okay. And then you're going to reset all of the good things, you know, that, that you built for three weeks. And then it's going to take you a week and then it's all going to crumble. Now, this isn't the case. It's just what it felt like, right? Now, what you've really helped me identify was the the cycle, you know. And and I looked around and, and I've, I talked to my wife. The, so the metaphor I was telling my wife the other day was, you know, it's like the cycle happens and I can hear it, but it's in a crowded room. And so I can't mm -hmm. identify the source. So I'm like, hang on, was that you saying that? Was Hang on, was that you? And then it quiets down and then I go about my three weeks and the next month it pops back up. And I'm like, I hear this son of a bitch. It's like um, having a <laughs> mouse in the wall or like a smoke detector or battery going dead and you're just looking for the damn thing. And right. what you helped me do was to find it. I finally go, aha. It's you, you son of a bitch. We're going to have a conversation. And that's what, that's what really allowed me to fix this or, or flip it on its head and identify it in a way that was productive and not something that just drained me. And so this is something that I really wanted to mention because man, like I said, I, I know these principles, I know this stuff and it didn't work for me in the way that I was expecting it to, or that the same result that everyone else was experiencing and then reporting back. So that's one thing that I really want you to let everybody know. How do you identify and then stop those damn cycles? So you stop self-sabotaging. That is such an amazing question. And yes, the, I'm laughing over here just because I, I mean, I've done the same thing. I mean, we all go through the same experience, right? This is why it's so important to take our ego out of this. We, I can describe subconscious to people. I can describe what it actually is. I can describe what it does for us. I can describe that it makes 35,000 decisions for us every single day. Our soulmate can be right in front of us and we're going to completely ignore them because we're not al aligned and attuned to that person. Um, if I took a left, I would have gotten into a car accident with the movie producer who would have distributed my film to, you know, but I didn't do that. I took a right, you know, there's all these things that are aligned right to us, but we are not attuned to it. Right. 
and our subconscious is what's controlling us. We manifest from our subconscious. Let me say that again, everybody. We manifest from our subconscious. <laughs> so if you are trying to say, I, I need to learn more in my conscious mind, I need to listen to what Dewey's saying more, just, you know, let me just listen to his podcast 24 hours a day. Let me just read the affirmations. Let me just, okay, that's great. We have to get this, the conscious mind in alignment as well. So the conscious mind is what goes, this is where I'm going. You know, this is where I want to end up. But, but the subconscious mind is really what we have to get into alignment for all those 35,000 tiny little things that are going to happen, right? That's really what we're the beacon, I'd say, that we turn on that goes attraction, 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 right? That's the subconscious. So a big component of that, uh, of what happens with our cycles. Now, identifying the cycles, that's probably weeks and weeks of, you know, intense coaching. We have, we go through all that. I like to think of it like, um, and, and just visualize a, a roundabout, right? So when you go into a roundabout, there are multiple exits and you can spin around in that roundabout as long as you want. You can just avoid the exit. Well, eventually I'll get there, but I need to do this first. Or, oh, let me think about it a little more, right? So we keep going by the exits and I could go this way, could go that way. Sometimes we don't exit because we're indecisive. Sometimes we don't exit because we're scared of what's on the other side of the exit. So, you know, there's all these reasons why we don't, but we just keep spinning around, spinning around, doing the same thing, right? <laughs> Expecting a different result, doing the same thing. So most people actually only move through three or four big roundabouts in their whole life. Remember the Rubik's cube I was talking about, right? That's what we call a polarity grid. We practice that. Each one of those little points on the grid is a roundabout. So if you if you have to go 20 clicks up, you know, forward, 10 clicks up, seven clicks to the left, if that's really where your desire is, think about how many cycles we have to move through just to get to the first goal. That's what feels overwhelming to people. But when you see people flying, it's because they can identify when I'm entering a cycle, when I'm exiting a cycle. They can, I, they can transcend past all the little emotions and all that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you how to do that in a second and kind of tune into a higher frequency, which is really just inspiration, right? Because when you're inspired, you fly through these cycles so fast. You enter, exit, enter, exit, enter, exit, enter, exit. And all of a sudden people are like, how are they going so fast? Why does everything work for that person? Why is everything so easy for them? Because they don't get caught on all the tiny little details, right? They don't second guess every little thing. They have changed the program. And part of power programming is to turn that switch off. Every possibility is an open door. And I've used the lightning strike thing right before when oh, I'm explaining yeah. stuff to you, right? right? So the think about, you know, lightning starting from the sky. And it is its goal is to hit the ground, right? So... It is going to pivot millions of times because it's moving through the atmosphere and every microsecond it is making a pivot because whatever the path of least resistance is at that moment, it's going to take that in order to get to the ground. It doesn't second guess it. If it thinks it's going to go straight and then it needs to go to the left, it goes to the left, goes to the right, right? Goes back, goes forward, but it's going to get to the ground. It doesn't think about it. It doesn't question it. And that's why lightning, when we look at it from our perception of time, it looks like it strikes in an instant. That's what it looks like with these people who are just flying through life. How can lightning strike for them? But for me, every little step is so arduous because they're flying through cycles, not spinning their wheels in the hamster wheel of the cycle over and over and over and over and over. So what you're saying is important, identifying what a cycle is, what it looks like, and then practicing over and over how to identify, I entered a new cycle, I'm exiting an old cycle. Now this is a new cycle and now I'm going here, I'm going there. And once you are more aware of that and you can understand where you're moving and if it feels good and, and all the stuff that feels bad in our lives, we just talked about this this last week, right? Yep. When something feels bad, I had a bad week, you know, a bunch of terrible things happen. That's just perception. Really what those things are, are indicators. It's my favorite word. Say it all the time, right? Oh, that's just an indicator. An indicator of what? I'm not moving where I want to move on this polarity grid to get where I'm going. It's an invisible grid. So we have to listen to the tuner inside of ourselves so if it doesn't feel good, if that feels really awful, not just, you know, uncomfortable. Comfortable is good, right? I'm talking, I'm really not aligned with this. That's not where I want to go. That's not what I want to do. Great. Go the other way. That will get you, you know, this many clicks over, this many clicks up to where you're trying to go. And when you get there, you're going to go, yep, 
I call it of course energy. When you arrive at the destination and you're perfectly aligned with it and you're expecting it and you have moved through all the cycles and you finally arrive at that destination, you go, yep, this is, this is right. Of course, of course I'm here. This is where I was going the whole time. It feels so good, right? It, it's absolutely brilliant. And this is one of the things that just cracked me up about this was, is that you and I started working together <laughs> at the beginning of July and I've never had more focus or direction. You took all of this <clears throat> stuff and you just said, hang on, well, it's all right here. And it, you're just like, oh, I just knocked this up. And then there you go. And I'm like, oh my God, I've never been so inspired. I've never like moved so quickly. I was at this roundabout, roundabout, roundabout. I, I was like identifying circles. I was in multiple circles at the same time. And I said, hang on, let's first of all regroup to get on the same focus, you know, so my mind's not over here spinning in this cycle and then another piece of me and my energy was just so divided into these separate cycles so what you allowed me to do is really grab all of myself and pull me together to the same at least roundabout and then it looked like a straight line i couldn't see cycles anymore it's just like oh yeah, yeah. yeah just go that way and you're good and this was the other thing that was so interesting about this because as our weeks progressed uh, you know perceivably my life got shittier and shittier and shittier. And as I was telling you this, you had this shit eating grin on your face that was actually, it, it never annoyed me. It was very inspiring. And really, again, just because I, I trust you. And so uh, whenever I would be telling you this stuff, you just have this huge smile and you're just like, you're doing it. And I'm just like, ah, but you cut me off. You beat me to it by saying, you know, I know it doesn't feel like it, but, yeah. and that's the exact next sentence I was going to say. And so again, and uh, th this perspective that you have, <laughs> I'm so grateful you brought up the roundabout thing again before I could even ask you for that metaphor. Uh, you just launched right into it, which is perfect. Um, so let's let's definitely talk about uh, uh, this media blackout that you're talking about, because I think that that's something that everybody inherently wants anyway, but perhaps just empower us to see it a little bit different. Sure. Well, we practice media blackout uh, really quick to kind of just cap off what you were saying. One of the main things that we teach, we show people, you know, we talked about tuning, right? You can tune into that frequency of inspiration that has to do with kind of what we're talking about. It has to do with two things, really like brainwave frequencies, understanding when you're in certain modes of operation. And there are certain things that we can do physically in our 3D space to actually change what frequency we're operating at. So that's one. The other thing that we practice all the time is executive function and self-regulation. If you can't control your emotional response, if you can't control your impulses, right? If you are not aware, self-aware of what's going on because we're being delusional. We talk, we have a whole episode on our podcast about like d delusion, dream, like what are we living in, right? And that has to do with closing the gaps as well. So being able to actually put your hand on the dial and turn it to tune to where you want to go is so incredibly important. Um, but with media blackout, that's kind of on the other end of that. The reason why we practice that during the week, I call it mindful media. Uh, you know, it's not saying don't consume media. We're participating in media right now. It's an amazing tool, right? <laughs> we can get our message out there. We can amplify. But I mean, and I'm in the film industry. I have a movie coming out next year. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not like I don't participate in media, but I'm mindful about how I participate. The alpha brainwave state is so powerful. When we're on our phones, when we're watching television, think about... If you are in a, you know, like when I was a kid, right, I'm thinking about I'm being, a, I'm at a lake house. My friend had this lake house we'd go to all the time, right? Like we were the poor kids. They were the rich kids, right? <laughs> we're like, they have a lake house, man, right? So we'd always, every summer we'd go for like two weeks. And that was like the one thing we were able to do that was like exciting in our lives. Because everything else was just like, you know, we lived in a trailer in the middle of the woods around a bunch of hicks and there was nothing to do, right? Culty. So. Yeah. <laughs> That was like our really cool escape. And when we would go do that, I would just, I have this picture in my head when I think of media blackout, I would always be the one to go in and like make popcorn and just, I was just always that kind of person. I love cooking. And so there's a big group of people, Hey, I'll make us snacks. So I would always come in about 10, 20 minutes after the movie would start. And I would come in and be handing people stuff and they wouldn't even really acknowledge my existence, right? That zombie look when you're staring at the screen, cause you're just so captivated. You're aware that you're awake, but you are a literal waking zombie. That's what we're in that brainwave frequency where we're getting subconsciously programmed while we're consuming media. So it's so incredibly important compensation <laughs> to give ourselves a break from that to create space. One of the funniest things that we do exercises, talk about a, a very practical application of law of compensation. People come in, I told you before, one of the big excuses, I don't have time. I just don't have time. How am I gonna fit all this in? I don't have time, I don't have time. And I tell them immediately, whip out your phone, Yep. <laughs> go to your screen time and, and report to me how much screen time at the end of the week. I'm telling you, it's, 
oh my God, it's 36 hours this week. Okay. That's a full-time job, girl. You know, <laughs> like that's a full-time job. So let's, let's stop that. And I even have, we've had influencers, pretty powerful influencers come in and go, well, how can I practice media blackout during the week? That's my job. And I say, well, why don't we use the week to get inspired, right? Practice compensation in other ways. Let's create space to put all of our good ideas through the whole week and not feel like we have to impulsively, for instance, right? We're talking about executive function and self-regulation. Let's not impulsively create in the moment. Just stay tuned into inspiration all week long. You're going to have a laundry list of things you could do for like five years. Then you can just curate that list and go, what is the best of the best of the best? And then on the weekends, create your content for the whole week. So your weeks are free. And now guess what I hear from those people? Oh my gosh, I have so much more time. Now I think I'm going to launch this t-shirt brand and I'm doing this big thing over here with this person. I'm making more money than ever. I'm like, hmm, interesting, right? So they stay inspired all week long without having to take any action on anything. And when it comes time to actually produce content, and that's another thing I hear all the time, I'm so worn out, you know, I have so much work to do. Okay, well, stop taking action when it's not inspired action. That's forceful action. I have to create content every day, but I'm just burned out. We'll stop creating content every day. Let's take a break. Let's tune into the inspiration. Allow all these ideas to flow through the whole week. Let's create for one day, schedule it all week. And look, we have an entire week of extra time to do other things. I mean, it, it's like mind blowing to people where there's like, oh my gosh. So media blackout is a really important part of what we do in order to practice mindful media. So still enjoy the movies with your friends, you know, enjoy the podcast, like what we're doing right here. It's about being mindful of how we step into the spaces and what we're getting out of that. So we're not a zombie. It, it's again, this is like the light that you shine on these d different patterns that are, you know, and you're so quick to identify it. You're just like, yeah, yeah, just do this and change it. And then a week later, your life is completely different just from this <laughs> one little understanding. It's insane. Like I said, just the way, the way that you're able to identify and then have an instant solution it's, it, and have a path and have something? several. It's fascinating to me, dude. Please, please. But what I've been told most of my life, because the more I tuned into this and the more I saw other people, I'm just existing in that e space. I'll tell you right now, I signed a contract last week. I'm making more money than I ever have made in my life. God, it is awesome. And guess what? That came to me because they said, we see so that's another thing we practice value exchange. Let's talk about that in a second. Yeah. But I have grown my value to a place where I don't even have to ask anymore. People go, hey, can we just pay you more money for what you do? Please. You're so valuable. We want you to feel the value back. Please get on this contract. And I go, okay, sure. <laughs> so I'm on consulting contracts with global brands. I'm on media contracts. I'm working with celebrities. I can't even say the celebrity I'm working with next because it's a, it's a hush contract, yeah, yeah. but they're a multi Grammy award winning artist. may or may not be a, a coach on the voice. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but the whole thing is like, I work with these people, right. And they, it just kind of shows up. And the whole idea is people look at me and my mom for her entire life has been like, you just, you're magical. I don't understand. What you're and I'm like, I'm really not. I promise. I'm just in that same flow state now that all these other successful people are in that I was observing going, why am I not there? So this is what we really do. And this is the magic of the manifestor's guide. I, this is why it's called manifestor's guide too. I'm glad you brought this up. I'm not a guru. I don't want to be a guru. I don't want to be your guru. right? I don't want that. I don't believe in that where it's like, I have to continue listening to Dewey all the time or else I'll never get this insight. That's bull. What I am, am is a mirror. So every time you've said what you've done for me, what you've done for me, I actually haven't done it. My mission is I've, I have seen other people be the mirror to me. And I go, oh, this is my opportunity to practice value exchange. Just so everybody knows my coaching, meaning like where I have been coached, it's $60,000 a year. Most people can't afford that. So not only is my mission about a lot, getting all this knowledge, right? And all of this, here's how you do it that I have learned over the years to, to be where I am, but to make it accessible, to make it affordable for people so we can get those 1 million master manifestors. Because once we have a million people who can do what I'm doing and more, right? People who are exceeding what I'm doing, there is no need for this to even exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? They will have changed the course of, of the future, the trajectory. We will be out of the matrix. It won't even exist anymore. And that's my whole entire mission in life. This is completely doable. And I've said to people, all over the place. If it wasn't me, it would have been someone else. This was ready to come in. I just happened to be tuned in 
the right time at the right place. And I was listening. So it came through me. Great. And several other incredible people, I will say at TMG, it's not just me, but you know, it, it's, it's, we show people how to do this. We show people how to do everything I'm talking about, how to identify, how to look underneath the surface, how to turn off the old program, how to put that power program. We show you how to do everything that I'm doing. So we have all these people running through the world going, oh, no, this is what's going on. Oh, that's the cycle. That's what's going on. Well, let's stop that here. Let's just move that here. Oh, look, another open door. And people are like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you when I was a kid. You were the dumbest person I met. How in the world are you a millionaire? <laughs> you know, that's the coolest thing to see a company be like, hey, we just got to our first million dollars, um, but we don't know how to scale. And then like you're four months later and they're like, we hit $10 million. And you're like, congratulations. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's the coolest thing in the world to see people just move and just remove all this stuff where they're like, I'm not worthy of it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an imposter. Okay, let's just move all that out of the way. And let's show you how to do it. And then you can just soar. And the best thing in the world for me is when previous members just kind of disappear. They'll pop back in every once in a while and go, hey, guys, it's been a while. Just checking in. And they have this laundry list of incredible things that have happened in their life. Quick update. I don't know who's still here anymore, but right. We moved over here. We opened the business. We did this. We hit our first million. And it's just like all this stuff because we haven't heard from you in like a year, you know? Then crushing That's it. the best thing in the world because they're just crushing it. They don't, this has become irrelevant to them because they know how to do it. They have mastered it. That's the whole idea of what we're doing. So our next phase two at our company, we actually want to offer a certification in this so we can actually, because we're at the place where it's like hard to keep track of this. <laughs> so we want to offer a certification so we can literally track how many master manifestors we've created. So, cause we, we really want to measure that goal. We want to hit a million and be like, we have, this is really what we've done. We have achieved, we've manifested the mission, you know? So um, yeah, that's our next phase too. Well, I love it because this, this, this idea of neurolinguistic programming and all that, I'm very aware of, I'm very aware of like affirmations and things like that, but it, it didn't ring the same bells as whenever you had, when you, whenever you'd started working with me. And so what I, what I found interesting about whenever I'm doing affirmations and things like this, I'm sitting here saying, hang on, you know, maybe this is the step to get there, but I'm not embodying my future most high self because my future most high self doesn't do this. He's too busy crushing it to sit here and write, like I'm financially abundant, like eight fifty five times or whatever. And so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's kind of a disconnect. And this is what you helped me really realize was that filling that gap, the goal gap that you talk about. And uh, again, man, I, I can't say enough wonderful things about you. Um, we'll we'll wrap it here in a minute, but let's definitely close on value exchange, dude. And and you, of course, have an open invite. You know that you're absolutely welcome to come back any damn time. So um, let's absolutely. definitely. Well, you're just wonderful. Let's definitely. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. So value exchange. Walk us through that. So just value exchange is obviously it's just, it's kind of a general term that's used, especially in business. I learned that very early when I was in these executive spaces, I heard all the time, what's the value exchange? What's the value exchange? Right. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Especially when it comes to value proposition, right? How am I proposing the value to others that I will be exchanging? For instance, if I am, um, well, I'll say this Greta Van Real. I don't know if everybody's familiar with her, but she is a entrepreneur and has multiple businesses, multimillionaire. I love the way she puts this. She's like, you can sell like a million paper clips through at Walmart, right? And you're only going to make X amount of money. Or I could sell one gold paper clip that has this like it, once in a lifetime story behind it kind of thing for a thousand dollars. Not everybody's going to want to buy this. So many people are going to look at it and go, that's stupid. Why would I ever pay a thousand dollars for paper clip? But someone's going to find that valuable. And guess what? I have to sell way fewer of these paper clips than I do to constantly be restocking millions and billions of sets of paper clips to sell for 97 cents to all these people. You know, I mean, that is an tremendous amount of work on one side versus, well, let me just sell this gold paper clip. You know, I just love how she puts it. That's what she does with her brands. She's like, what are we creating that's valuable for what reason? And for instance, a lot of people don't like what, like I'll bring Starbucks up for a reason. Right. And I'm talking about the business part of this first so we can transmuted into other spaces. Nice. But what people buy at Starbucks is not coffee. They're not buying coffee. They're buying the experience. They pay extra money because they get to go into a place and make it all about themselves. They get to say, I want it this way. Nope, you didn't do it right. Can you remake this for me? Please pay attention. Oh, you remembered my name. That's right, because I'm important here. You know, that's what they're buying. Starbucks knows that. 
So that's why it's not really even about the coffee. People complain about Starbucks all the time. It's not even good coffee. They're not buying the coffee. Yeah, you're missing the point. They're buying <laughs> the entire experience of being powerful and seen and heard in a space that is all about you. 100%. I'll, I'll pour your drink out in front of you. There are people starving in the world. Yeah. I will pour this out in front of you and I will remake it exactly as you are asking me. And I will, I, every sprinkle of the cinnamon, I will ask you if that's good enough and you'll say more and I'll do another one. Go, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You know, that's what they're paying for. So the whole idea is whatever we find valuable and exchanging that into the world with people who find the value in it. That's literally the basic you know, um, description of value exchange. We are all inherently born with value. Every single one of us, the puzzle pieces are here, guys. We just don't know how to put it together. Right. But that's the values, all the puzzle pieces. It's our, our, our minds and our, our love and our energy and our talents and our skills are time. Time is valuable, right? We can exchange so many things. I call those energy currencies. We have a lot of different energy currencies. And money is also a part of that, right? It's just another currency. And money changes throughout time too. It could be a paper bill, it could be a goat, doesn't matter. We're still exchanging something for something else that's valuable, right? So the whole idea of it, it's all the same thing. We can grow our value. And that's what we encourage everybody to do here. Whatever you are excited to do, we have a, a member who is in her 70s. She almost died multiple times, okay? She had heart problems and now she has like two stints and all this stuff. It's an incredible story. She wrote an article that's coming out on our blog later, manifestorsguide.com. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> but her, her, I think her blog post is called something like how facing my own death inspired me to truly live. That's what it's called. Oh, great title. And yeah. she now has this mission where she's like, I'm not done. I may only have five years. I may have 10 years. I may have 20, but I'm not done. And she's finally living for the first time because she has known intrinsically what her value is, but she's never invested in it. So that's the other thing is we don't spend at Manifestor's Guide. We invest. So that means anything that we are putting out into the world is an investment in something. So I can be somebody who goes and gives a sandwich to a homeless person. But am I reinforcing their lack by doing that? Oh, my gosh, you poor thing. Oh, my gosh, you were just such a little wretch. Let me help you with your food, right? Are we doing that? Because a lot of people do that, right? And then they want the, the glory and the praise of how I gave the sandwich out, you know, versus reminding someone of their own power. Oh, dude, I got you. No worries. Here's a sandwich. I've had somebody buy my lunch before. I'm a CEO. I've had people buy my lunch. It's the same thing. Remember that you're powerful. And remember that this is just all an illusion. You have the same power that I do as a CEO making tons of money as you do as a homeless person, we are no different, right? How am I exchanging that value? How am I growing that? That's what we're talking about, the expansion journey. We can grow that value, our talents, our skills. We can create more space for more time, right? We can create all this value and grow and grow and grow. And it's exciting. The adventure is so exciting. And then we can uh, decide how to exchange that into the world in meaningful ways. That's where mission and vision and purpose come in, which we've talked about before too, right? Yeah. When we attach ourselves to the mission and we're exchanging, it open opens up a cyclical energy cycle that just keeps bringing more and we can put more out and we become an, an engine. And that's what we encourage all of our members to be, be an engine of abundance, be an engine of opportunity, an engine of open doors. But in order to do that, that means you have to also invest your energy, your time. Your So if you're finding, this is my general rule for everyone. If you're finding value in something, and we say this on the podcast every week, if you found value in this episode, share it with somebody else, right? Or do this because the whole point is, and it's not just for me, it's for you. When I find value in something, I immediately share it. We share it on the blog or we share it over here. Or I share it with a friend, share the value. I also love, I, I subscribe to, this is what, um, so that Nori is that person who's the 70 year old, right? <laughs> who's, who almost died in our community. She started a brand called Never Too Late Nori. And her whole mission now, she still doesn't know how to do it. And she's bringing it through. She's literally in process now. You can go follow her at Never Too Late Nori. Um, but her whole idea is to travel the world and to be just giving away money to people and reminding them of their own power, right? It's that oh, whole concept of, um, what's it called? It's like undercover. Um, like the undercover boss. Or yeah. It's like with that thing where it's like you're giving you know, undercover giving is what it's called. Oh, so they um, there's a couple of influencers that do that. And the reason why she even kind of aligned with that is because 
I'm one of those people I give, I give all the time to that. I think it's amazing. So if, for instance, if there's a mom like, Oh, my daughter got leukemia, but Hey, everything's good. And you know, there's some guy shows up and he goes, Hey guys here secretly, here's her cash app. I'm some, one of those people who goes, Oh, Hey, here's money. You know, I love yeah. doing that. And I send a powerful message to those people too, all the time. Right. Just like th- you're good. You are not in a lax face, like buy the kids dinner, do this, but like, but you're powerful. Like this is just a reinforcement, a mirror back to you that you're powerful. This is not. So that's the concept also of being a wealth steward. It's not just because you have money doesn't mean it's yours. It's not about being greedy, right? It's about finding the channels to where you can put this back out into the world to create more of what you desire, right? More inspiration, more power, more movement, and what more of what I'm doing, creating master manifestors, right? So that's when this becomes really fun. So I encourage everybody, if you find value in something, absolutely contribute right back to it. Do that financially, do it with your time, do it with your focus, do it by sharing it with other people, but absolutely open that, that exchange cycle. Don't just sit there and consume and be a black hole, you know, and pull, pull, pull energy out of something because then you literally are participating in the consumer cycle. And that's a whole nother episode, right? About like consumerism versus, you know, creation. So if you wanted to actually create, participate in the energy, the movement energy, the energy of movement, movement of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so many people, and I love the way you put this, man. So many people sit there and they invest a ton of time into social media, into the news, into things that just irk them and things that they can't stand. And it only reinforces where they are. And so why not take even just a fraction of that time you've already dedicated to self-sabotaging and just dedicate it to something (laughs) maybe that you invest in yourself or grow or feel a part of a community or call Dewey up because I'm telling you, dude will change your life. Dewey Taylor, I cannot thank you enough for everything you've done in my life personally, but also for spending some time with us thank here you. today, dude. You, you're well, absolutely here, welcome I'm going to practice value exchange really quick with you. I know you're closing up, but if anybody did relate to this, like I said, this is not doing what we do is not for everyone. But if you were like, this is for me and you actually want to come into our community and do this with us, great. But I'm going to practice value exchange right now. I'm going to give you a link for expanding reality. So uh, your members follow that link. We'll not only give them a, a, a discount, but I will also put some of that back toward your podcast because that's value exchange, right? So cool. Because that's what we're talking about. There's nothing in the world that exists in this reality that cannot be abundant, right? Abundance fills over. I want to invest back in your mission because that's important. So I would say to anybody, if you're going to do that, don't just go to our website, follow the link that I'll give you and we'll do that. So perfect. It'll, it'll be the first one up. Dewey Taylor, I can't thank you enough, dude. This is what I'm talking about. And guys, I know so many people out there resonate with this. Go check out the website. Thank you so much again, brother. I, I can't thank you enough, man. Tremendous. Send in lots of love. Thanks, everybody. I just cannot brag on that dude enough. Uh, Dewey, like I said a million times now, this is a million and one, has absolutely changed my life, has changed my perception on all of this stuff, and it does make an absolute difference in your life as well if you choose to invest in yourself in the way that Dewey is offering that you can. Now, to do that, uh, go down and check the show notes down there, guys. He has a special scholarship offer, which will be the first link located down there as well if you go to checkout. Uh, There's a coupon code, Expanding Reality, all caps, one word, and that will give you 10% off of anything on top of that. That's doubling your discount, guys. Uh, Dewey has made this super easy for you all to change your life and invest in yourself. Take him up on it. Again, the change that it's made in me personally has been insane. It is night and day different, so I cannot brag on and support this guy enough. Okay, so while you guys are down in the show notes down there, Check out the resource links that we've got. Food Forest Abundance, of course. Opus, absolutely. And of course, the Manifestor's Guide, guys. Go sign up down there. Again, could not recommend this enough. Just couldn't recommend it enough. Uh, While you're down there in the show notes as well, you're going to find a link called expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is where you can link on over to all the socials. We've got all of our merchandise linked up there. Some really cool stuff. We work with some awesome artists on some designs, so definitely check those out. As well as um, all the Too Hot for YouTube stuff. The lives are replayed. But more than that, you can sign up to become an expansive insider and join our mission of getting a 1,000 active members and engaged, aligned audience is what we're going for here. And it's been incredible. The folks that have signed up already have just had nothing but amazing things to say about it. There's all sorts of bonus content over there. So you're really missing out if you're not a part of this. So go sign up down there and become an expansive insider. While we're on the topic, this is a value for value system. So if you find the show valuable, donate whatever you can. Support the mission. Again, invest in the ideas so that they can keep coming and keep coming to fruition in your life. 
This is how we expand and become a greater, grander version of all of us. So if you feel called to do that and you find value in the show, we strongly encourage that you just click the link down there titled support the mission and give anything you can. If everybody just donated that listens to this show a dollar an episode, it would change the world. I know that sounds silly, but it's absolutely accurate. So check those links down there, guys. Absolutely check out the Manifestor's Guide. I just, again, wanted to thank Dewey for everything he's done for me, as well as coming on the show here and, and sharing some of that with you guys as well. So let's go out into this beautiful, amazing place, whatever the hell this thing is, y'all, and pick up a piece of litter. Go ahead and be nice to everybody that you come across. If you see somebody in line and they're just buying a coffee, go ahead and pick up the tab for them. If you're at Starbucks, like Dewey talked about in this episode, pick up their Starbucks for them. I know it sounds like a silly thing, but It goes so damn far, just like supporting the show here. It seems small and insignificant, but the ripple effects energetically are massive. While you're doing all that, get out of the left-hand lane while you're driving to that coffee shop. If you got somebody behind you wanting to pass, that is for passing. We are going quickly and we'd like to get there. And that's what that lane's for, so just move on over. A lot of people don't know that, and that's why I keep saying it. Um, Also, go out into this beautiful, beautiful place, whatever the hell this thing is, guys, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank you so much for listening, watching, engaging, and supporting. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. We will see you next time.